It always feels good when you are appreciated. SLT Non-Stop Broadband. Free loyalty data added as you stay connected. Link at the time of the day, you will be able to get the money. Mom, what are you doing? more games. The government plans to withdraw from Sri Lanka co-sponsored UNHRC resolutions. Polls apart. The Cardinal wants more from the Easter Attack Commission. We hear that uh, some actions are taking place. That's not enough for us. We want a thorough investigation. But what of the Parliamentary Select Committee? And that was kind of a whitewash. We are not satisfied about the Parliamentary Select Committee. Director General of the INSSSL criticizes the Defense Ministry for systematic backsliding in the lead up to the Easter attacks. Bureaucratic inertia was there at the ministry. Maiden complaint. Admiral of the Fleet Vasanta Karannagoda testifies before the Presidential Commission probing political victimization. All that and much more coming up on First at Nine. This Tuesday, the 18th of February, 2020. From Adha Verana, this is Adha Verana First at Nine. Live from Studio 24 in Colombo. Good evening and welcome to First at Nine. I'm Dhammi Kekanai. Now, Archbishop of Colombo, His Eminence Malcolm Cardinal Ranjit continued his criticism of the investigations into the Easter Sunday attacks and expressed a disappointment in the Presidential Commission of Inquiry not being given enough public attention. Calling for investigations of all persons connected to the security failure, irrespective of their positions, the Cardinal expressed dissatisfaction of the Parliamentary Select Committee appointed to probe the attacks, calling it a whitewash of the tragedy. Addressing the media at the Bishop's House in Colombo, the Cardinal called on all citizens to observe a two-minute silence on the 21st of April in memory of the victims. On Tuesday the 21st, we will begin a ceremony at uh, St. Anthony's Church, Kochikade, and at uh, St. Sebastian's Ch Church, Katuapitiya. At 8.45, we will observe two minutes silence to remember the dead. We will invite all our fellow citizens to join us in this activity from wherever they are. And uh, after the two minutes silence, there will be ringing of bells. We invite all religions to participate in that. At uh, lunchtime, we will offer dane for all the people who come. We invite all our fellow citizens, brothers and sisters to join us in spirit of solidarity and pray for our country that again such incidents will never happen, that between the religious and ethnic communities of Sri Lanka, there will be peace, harmony and understanding and that we will resolve to settle all issues among us in a friendly and fraternal manner. The Cardinal also touched on the investigations into the attack which are currently underway. We hear that uh, some actions are taking place. That's not enough for us. We want a thorough investigation from the first moment to the last moment, all those who are involved in the attacks and all those who are involved in trying to hide the facts and try to pass the baby to another person. While we have a lot of trust in the Presidential Commission, it looks as if it is something done at a corner, but not getting the sufficient amount of attention so that uh, we feel that our people's lives are respected and valued by society. We want the government, the President and all the other government responsibles to be on their toes in order to investigate this what has happened and then carry on with an active investigation not just only point somebody and say okay that somebody will look after that no you have to follow it up with the security council you must investigate how much of information have you got up to now we want to know we want to know who is responsible <laughs> Yes, we have uh, indications of collusion, some involvement with these parties, with these people who blasted the bombs. They had support from some of the others. 
Some of the people had spoken in their favor, try to release them. So all those people have to be investigated. It can be also business, political, whatever it may be. Everything has to be investigated to find out whether they had anything more than just only peripheral contacts. Because we feel that uh, unless that is done, the truth will never emerge. We are coming to know gradually that even at the top level, some people were aware of these things and they didn't do anything. So even the top level people must be investigated. But is it, is it only the former IGP and the defense secretary? The question has to be asked. Well, the parliamentary select committee for me is only the partial look at it without proper participation of all sides in the event, in that inquiry. And also only a certain portion of people were called upon to give evidence and we, obviously the evidence was not completed. And that was a kind of a whitewash. We are not satisfied about the Parliamentary Select Committee. In the meantime, Director General of the National Security Studies, Sri Lanka, Professor Asangar Begunasekara, is critical of the Ministry of Defence during the tenure of the Government of Good Governance in the lead up to the Easter Sunday terror attacks. After giving a 13-page statement to the Presidential Commission of Inquiry probing the attacks, Professor Abe Gunasekara said bureaucratic inertia had set in at the ministry during that time and the threat forecasts he had supplied it with were left idle. I have highlighted the systemic errors in this country. What are the problems that are underlying pre and post attack? This was actually a heinous crime that was done, but it should have been prevented. Unfortunately, our research reports and many things went unheard. Our threat uh, forecast, which I wrote in 2019 January, which clearly mentioned to find out the external links of this fraction and the significant national security threat. And um, they're not given much attention from the higher level to the lowest, I would say, bureaucratic inertia who was there at the ministry. And this was very sad because some of the reports they cannot say they have not seen because there are signatures as well as there are markings from the pen on the extremism on which I highlighted the significant threat starting from 2017 March. So all this was neglected. The previous commission, although my name was mentioned, nobody invited me. That was a false statement given at the previous commission saying that uh, there was a letter sent to me and there was no reply. The reply to the letter is there as well as the discussion that we held is also there. So I think this is a clear indication of a gross national security failure. The Presidential Commission of Inquiry probing political victimization of members of the public service and the military heard its first complaint today from none other than Admiral of the Fleet Vasanta Karanagoda. The former Navy commander's complaint alleges a concerted effort by the government of good governance to implicate him in the indictment or incident rather involving the abduction and detention of five youth by Lieutenant Commander Sampat Munasinghe, alias Navy Sampat. The commission was also told of false testimonies having been recorded by senior Navy personnel in attempts to implicate him in the incident in return for top military and civil positions. The Presidential Commission of Inquiry probing alleged political victimization of public servants and members of the armed forces during the past five years commenced this morning. Accordingly, former Navy Commander Admiral of the Fleet Vasanta Karanagoda, who filed the first complaint, appeared before the Commission today. Representing the former Navy Commander Attorney at Law Rajika Balasuriya questioned his client with regards to a specific incident reported following the end of the humanitarian operation in 2009. The former Navy Commander stated that during this period he received information on Lieutenant Commander Sampat Munasinghe having detained five youths at the naval base in Trincomalee by the officer in charge of the Batalanda Defence College, Captain J.J. Ranasinghe. Admiral of the Fleet Karan Nagore told the Commission that he then inquired from Lieutenant Commander Sampat Munasinghe about the matter who refuted the allegations. The former Navy Commander informed the Commission that he also questioned Rear Admiral Susil Virasekara, the Commander-in-Chief of Trincomalee Naval Base at the time, who also refuted the claims. The Admiral of the Fleet revealed that he had then informed the Director of Naval Intelligence, Captain Guruge, to investigate the matter. 
The commission was then told a search of Lieutenant Commander Sampat Manasingha's quarters was carried out by the Naval Military Police, who subsequently reported the discovery of national identity cards belonging to four individuals, one passport, several debenture certificates and savings account books containing deposits amounting to several millions of rupees. Following the discovery, he revealed that he had then reported the incident to the Colombo Crimes Division based on advice received from the Defence Secretary and ordered Lieutenant Commander Sampat Munasingha be sent on a week's compulsory leave with immediate effect. The Commission was also told that Lieutenant Commander Sampat Munasingha had failed to report to duty following the ending of his week's compulsory leave and further inquiries had revealed that the absconding officer was being sheltered by the then Army Commander General Sarat Fonseca with whom the Navy Commander was in conflict with at that time. Admiral of the Fleet Karan Nagode also stated that after informing the Defence Secretary of this development and orders being issued in this regard, the suspected Navy officer had been handed over to the Criminal Investigation Department by Army Commander Sarat Fonseca on 10th June 2009. He also revealed that Fisheries Minister Felix Pereira had written to him on 18th July 2009 requesting for assistance in locating a number of missing youth and investigations had been initiated into the matter but he had retired two months after this incident before the conclusion of investigations. The former Navy commander had then informed the Commission that the Good Governance regime in 2015 had on numerous occasions attempted to seek his arrest in connection to this incident and that he had only agreed to record a statement in this regard on 30th September 2016 following a request from CID Inspector Nishanta Silva. He added that even though the line of questioning during the statement recording had revolved around the fisheries minister's letter, a B report had later been submitted to the Colombo Fort Magistrates Court by the CID, alleging that he had issued death threats to a Navy witness named Villa Gidera. The Admiral of the Fleet then told the Commission that at the time I had no knowledge of both the charges and the witness mentioned in the CID's B report and had then informed government higher-ups of attempts to arrest him on these trumped-up charges. He added that the Good Governance government had then made further concerted attempts to seek his arrest based on evidence linking him to the youth abduction incident provided to courts by Rear Admiral Travis Senaya, who was prompted to the post of Navy commander just three weeks later as reward for providing the false testimony. Admiral of the Fleet Karan Nagoda also revealed that another false testimony had been coerced by investigators, this time from subordinate Navy officer Rear Admiral Shamal Fernando, who had been rewarded with the post of director in the Customs Department for his cooperation. The Commission was also told that CID Inspector Nishanta Silva had threatened and attempted to physically assault another Navy officer in order to force him to read out a prepared statement implicating the former Navy commander in the incidents. He also alleged that the aim of targeting him specifically was an attempt to force him to implicate the then Defence Secretary and current President Gotabe Rajapaksa and Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa on war crimes charges that were to be taken up in the international criminal courts in The Hague. He also alleged that the Easter attacks were a result of the good governance regime's campaign of weakening the country's military as well as its intelligence network. And moving on with other local stories, President Gautabi Rajpaksha questions the attitude of officials for raising concerns with regard to the environment only when important projects take place, with little being done to curb illegal activities. Expressing disappointment over such issues not being addressed by relevant officers or authorities, rather, President Gautabi highlighted the need to identify ecosystems that require protection while placing restrictions on such areas being taken up for projects. President Gotabe Rajapaksa had an audience with the members of Inter-Ministerial Task Force on Industries and Entrepreneur Development at the Presidential Secretariat yesterday. The head of state had instructed officials to take measures to uplift local industries and encourage investors by putting an end to the obstacles they face. 
ප්‍රශ්නේ තියෙන්නේ මොකක් හරි වදගත් දෙයක් කරන්න ගියාම තමයි පරිසරයේ බලපාන්න. ප්‍රෙන් කරන එකට කිසිම පරිසරයේ බලපෑමක් නැහැ. මෙතන තමයි මේ වැරද්ද තියෙන්නේ. දැන් බලන්නකොට පහත් බිම් ගොඩ කරලා තියෙන තරම් මම ඒ දවස්වල ගොඩ කරපුවත් හැරුවා. අප මම ඒක දන්න හඳ දන්නවා පසු ගිය පස් අවුරුද්දේ පළාතම ගොඩ කරලා. හැබැයි පරිසරයේ කවුරුවත් කතා කරන්නෙත් නැහැ, නිලධාරි කෑ ගහන්නෙත් නැහැ, සෝෂල් මීඩියා එකේ යන්නෙත් නැහැ. කිසිම දෙයක් නැහැ. අපේ රටේ තියෙන පරිසරය පිළිබඳව මේ ඔක්කොම බැලුවොත් वार्ता राजपक्ष The relationship goes beyond mere bilateral relations. He made these comments while attending a felicitation ceremony where Venerable Othana Cho Jun was bestowed with the title of Great Sasana Ratana for his immense contributions made towards Buddhism in Japan and Sri Lanka. Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa took part in a felicitation ceremony held to bestow the title of Great Sasana Ratana to Venerable Othana Cho Jun of Japan. Japan and Sri Lanka have maintained a close friendship over several decades. Our relations are stood by each other at times of difficulty, apart from the prior relations between our countries. The most memorable time for its own honor to be. This is in fact the very embodiment of solidarity between the Buddhist community of Sri Lanka and Japan. Most memorable time for its own has played a major role. in between a dialogue between mahayana and theravada is so important is the solution to the problem the system of structure that mean means the spiritual in which can the people to the good spiritual kind can be seen throughout japan and sri lanka and beyond and i think also the we can forget the hell when tsunami hit sri lanka We will see you again shortly after this break. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You're watching First at Night. Now, following widespread public outrage over the US decision to issue a travel ban on Sri Lanka's army commander, Lieutenant General Shavendra Silva and his immediate family preventing them from entering the United States. The government's response to this was finally revealed today. General Secretary of the SLFP Dayasi Rajasekara stated that the government plans to withdraw from the United Nations Human Rights Commission resolutions 30/1 and 40/1. Speaking at a media briefing held at the Sri Lanka Freedom Party headquarters this morning, he stated that the decision was made during a special meeting chaired by the president with foreign ministry foreign ministry officials. क्रियात्मकने विशाल <laughs> जाति द्रोही प्रकाश मेरा सामान्य जनता तेरू 
Meanwhile, the Federation of National Organizations at a media briefing today stated that the withdrawal of the country from the UNCHR resolutions alone is an insufficient response to the U.S. move. now in other stories, the Minister of Education says that a special program will be launched to eradicate the drug menace from school children. The program is a collaborative effort between the Ministry of Education, Sri Lanka Police and the National Dangerous Drugs Control Board. Under it, interested parents or past pupils of each school will be employed as representatives of relevant school to educate children on drugs. These representatives will be given a special training by the police while arrangements will be made to deploy a police officer to each school for monitoring and coordination of the process. What's more, a special hotline 0777-128-128 was also introduced to report any drug-related activities or offences that occur within school premises or in the vicinity. Now, Sri Lanka's trade deficit has contracted by over 2 billion US dollars from 2018 to 2019 on a cumulative basis, driven by a sharp contraction in import expenditure. It was confirmed in the Central Bank's External Sector Report for December 2019. The report, meanwhile, highlighted an accelerated recovery in the tourism industry for December, although cumulative earnings declined, but also warned of continued pressure on the industry from the COVID-19 virus. December 2019 external sector report says that the deficit in the trade account widened in December 2019 to 784 million US dollars from 701 million US dollars in December 2018 led by a decline in exports and a growth in imports on a year-on-year -year basis. However, on a cumulative basis, the trade deficit contracted by 2.346 billion US dollars to 7.997 billion US dollars during 2019 from 10.343 billion in the previous year. Monthly tourist arrivals after the Easter Sunday attacks recovered notably and recorded only a modest decline on a year-on-year -year basis in December 2019. During the month, 241,663 tourists arrived in the country, recording a year-on-year -year decline of 4.5% compared to the drop of 9.5% in November and 22.5% in October 2019. Tourist arrivals from Russia, Canada and the United States improved in December 2019, while arrivals from key destinations such as France, Germany, Maldives and the United Kingdom declined. Tourist arrivals were recorded at 1.9 million in 2019, a decline of 18% compared to 2.3 million arrivals in 2018. The report warned that the tourism sector could suffer a further setback in the period ahead due to travel fears resulting from the COVID-19 outbreak. In the markets today, Sri Lankan stocks closed 0.29% higher, pushed up by food and commercial bank stocks. The All Share Price Index closed at 16.74 points up at 5,831.01, showing signs of volatility throughout the day, hitting an intraday low of 5,817.50 before noon and reached a daily high of 5,832.47 shortly before the market closed trading for the day. The S&P SL20 Index of more liquid stocks closed 14.81 points up at 2,783.66. Market turnover was 431.2 million rupees with 72 stocks gaining and 46 falling. Meanwhile, the Sri Lankan rupee was quoted marginally stronger today at 181 rupees and 50 cents against the US dollar, having closed at 181 rupees and 50 to 60 cents yesterday. Now let's take a look at how the Sri Lankan rupee traded against other major currencies during the day.
Welcome back. This is First at Night. Now, India has denied entry to UK Labour parliamentarian Debbie Abrahams, who chairs a parliamentary group on Kashmir. Abrahams arrived in Delhi with her aide from Dubai yesterday. After being denied entry, she was flown back to the United Arab Emirates. She has been an outspoken critic of the Indian government for stripping Kashmir of its semi-autonomy uh, autonomy last August, demoting it from a state of a federal territory. Immigration officials did not explain the reason for their decision. And that's it from all of us here at First at Nine. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.